Hear the word of the Lord. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your love, O Lord, and your, and your, sed, uh, and your mercy, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me. For the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Who is the man who fears the Lord? Him will he instruct in the way that he should choose. His soul shall abide in well-being, and his offspring shall inherit the land. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he makes known to them his covenant. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Bring me out of my diseases. Consider my affliction and my trouble And forgive all my sins. O Lord, guard my soul and deliver me. Good morning. It is good to be again in the house of our God. Welcome to Frankfurt United Methodist Church. Good morning. Happy Easter, everybody. Beautiful morning. Sun's shining, it's going to be warm all week, we've got a lot to be thankful for. Um, announcements. We, uh, many thanks to people that all uh, watched the, uh, the Game of Attendance to the Cantata, it's also out on the Facebook page and YouTube page. Yes. Um, if you did not get a chance to see it, um, that'd be a really good job. Uh, let's see, your coin boxes, make sure you uh, return your coin boxes, you can put them back there on the back table. And let's see, reminder again, Sunday, April 23rd, 2 p.m. is the disaffiliation vote. Um, so don't forget about that as well. And then we also have some inserts in here regarding the, uh, the membership committee it wants to put together a roster of names for regular attendees and the Sunshine Committee. Uh, are there anything going on this week we need to talk about? Um, yes. Choir members who are here, if they're not, I'll get in touch with them. No choir practice here Wednesday night, but there is special choir practice at 6.30 at St. Mary's Church. Um, I have the music. This is on the 29th. Yes, on on the 29th. Saturday the 29th. 29th. Uh, Like at Christmas, they've asked us to join their choir for their confirmation, and Delma said there's free supper afterwards, so if that makes you want to come and sing, you can be free afterwards. <laughs> so, um, and we will get to practice with St. Mary's Wednesday at 6.30. So. Wednesday at 6.30 for choir members. Okay. Anything else? Okay, well, I guess let's get ready to do some singing. A uh, praise song is 328. Surely the presence of the Lord, and opening him, 327, crown him with many crowns.
have the organ and the piano at the same time. Thank you so very much. That's, that's wonderful. Uh, now we'll turn to a, a very familiar passage, I hope, for our responsive reading. Uh, we'll, we will recite the end of Psalm 22. Please recite with me. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. For kingship belongs to the Lord. And he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow down all who go down to the dust. Even the one who could not keep himself alive. Posper posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> At this time, we have some special music to share with you, and Terry Corey is up first, and we thank her. She's going to be performing. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul.
Rogers, Savannah and Claire. And last is Woody Roll. He's going to do an Easter medley here. That was great. Thank you all so very much. I very much appreciate that. Uh, now we come to our uh, prayer and share time. If anyone has any prayer requests or praise reports, let us make them known. 
And I have to say, it's so good to see everyone here. Mark, thank you for coming in, brother. It's good to see you. I've, I've been, been asking about you. How are you feeling? I'm pretty good. And I'm glad to see David Yes, yes, absolutely. I've already welcomed him, but yes, it's good to see David as well. Thank you. And I have praises to all my mus musicians who we worked hard for the last many months and worked hard this morning preparing, so I thank them. Absolutely. Thank you all very much. Any, yes? Yes. Okay, Valerie. Yes. Uh, praise to uh, all that wonderful music. We are blessed to have so much talent uh, in this little church, and uh, I'm grateful that I could, could listen. Uh, thank God that uh, creates things like that. But uh, second, uh, uh, thankful for uh, people who reached out, Terry, for coming over for my uh, uncle's uh, funeral. But uh, he passed away on Tuesday. You know, yesterday, so the service was very fitting for his, for his life. Um, and then uh, thirdly, uh, don't forget about our school. Uh, prayers for them as they go into the last uh, couple of months of school. Yes, please don't remind me. <laughs> <laughs> Heather. Okay, we'll pray for Matt and Jason. Are there any others? Uh, I am thankful for that wonderful breakfast this morning. Uh, thank you both very much. Um, and, and everyone who, who helped to provide. Um, yeah, I was, I was worried because I'm, I'm, my diet is very strict right now. I'm, I'm not allowed to have pancakes and biscuits. And, and there was a big old pile of sausage down there and I, I ate that up. So that was really good. Thank you. Are there any others? We'll continue to pray for Janet and Ralph. Uh, and we'll add my niece, um, Megan to the list. She's having a very difficult time right now. And Pat Martin, who was. Pat, okay. All right. Are there any others? Yes, what do you? I just have a praise um, that my mom's here. Amen. She surprised me and showed up at the sunrise service. <laughs> 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 and um, she's here today and hopefully weeks to come. Amen. Absolutely. We're glad to see you, Lee. Are there any others? Well, let's just be thankful that I mean what Christ did for us. I mean Amen. this is a joyous day. We should be very ecstatic for what our Savior did for us those many years ago. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, are there any others? If not, let's go before the throne. Blessed and holy Lord, we come to you this Easter morning uh, singing songs of your praise. Lord, we are elated. We are shouting our high hosannas. We are thankful and happy that the tomb is empty. Lord, you have defeated death. You have overcome sin. You have restored Eden. You are good. You did these things, Lord, because you love us. You didn't need to do them. You could have simply wiped us out and started over again. But 
but you went to these extreme lengths because you love us. We are unworthy. We are small and weak and frail. We are sinful and rebellious. And yet, Lord, you love. And your love is the greatest thing in existence. Lord, we are awed by your love, by your acts in Christ Jesus to save us, to restore us to your side. Lord, we stand amazed. So, Lord, this morning we come. We come to worship, we come to pray, we come to praise, we come to learn, we come to sing and rejoice and to be grateful, Lord. We come to thank you for what you have done for us. Blessed Lord, we have sinned against heaven and against our fellow men. We have done those things we should not have done and we have left undone those things we should have accomplished and there is within us no peace. But blessed Lord, you tell us in your holy scriptures that if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just. That you will cleanse us of our trespasses and forgive us for all unrighteousness. And so, Father, in these next few moments, in this holy place, in the privacy of our own hearts, we make our confession before you. And so, Father, through our confession and through the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, the Anointed One, we are forgiven. And it is truly marvelous in our sight. Now, Father, as a righteous and a redeemed people, we stand before you. We lift before you, Father, those requests we have spoken this morning. We lift also before you those we have kept hidden in our hearts. Lord, we ask that you would be with Valerie and with our schools, with Matt and Jason, with Janet and Ralph, with Megan and with Pat. Lord, in each of these situations, we ask that you would be present you are the wonderful counselor. You are the mighty God. You are the great physician. You are the good shepherd. And so, Lord, we know that you are the answer. You are healing. You are security. You are peace. You are assurance. You are forgiveness. You are reconciliation. In you, there is light and life and hope and peace. Blessed Father, we ask your blessing on our nation and its leaders and all of the leaders of all of the nations of the world, Lord. We ask that you would guide them and strengthen them and empower them to do what is right in your eyes. That the word of the Lord would truly go forth from the mountaintops and ring throughout the valleys. 
that souls would be won for Jesus Christ and that peace would reign on the earth. Finally, Father, we ask your blessing on Frankfurt Methodist Church, Lord. We ask that you would strengthen us and use us for your great purposes. That you would bring into each of our lives those who need to hear the gospel, Lord, and that when you do, you would give us the wisdom to speak and the words to say. And now, Father, as we go into the remainder of our service, we ask that you would be with us. We ask, Lord, that you would open our ears and loose our tongues and soften our hearts that we might know and speak and hear the wonderful, holy truths of your Scripture. These things we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, the Anointed One, who himself has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Uh, At this time forward, I'd like to ask a couple of ushers to come forward. (laughs) Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, And uh, now, if you would, please, let's open our Bibles to John chapter 20 and verse 1. We're not going to do a normal exposition of this text. We've done that very recently, but uh, we do. I do want to read this um, this passage as sort of a jumping off point. Uh, John 20 and 1. Uh, Once you've found the place, or if you're going to follow along on the screen, if you're able, please let us rise for the reading of Scripture. Uh, John chapter 20 
and verse 1. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloth, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the Scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. The Word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Would you bow your hearts with me, please, for just a moment? Blessed and holy Lord, in these next few moments... May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Thank you. When I was a young boy, most weekends we'd go to Grandma's for Sunday dinner. After dinner, we would often go out to the family cemetery, a place called Beach Grove, A beach grove is a very old cemetery, at least by American standards, and you could only get there if you knew exactly where you were going or if you were completely lost. Jeff Foxworthy jokes that you might be a redneck if you've ever given directions which include the phrase, turn off the paved road. But in order to get to Beach Grove Cemetery, you turn off the paved road onto the gravel road And then you turn off the gravel road onto the dirt road. Still, there's a very old church up there and a fairly large cemetery where I spent many happy Sunday afternoons growing up. There are a lot of different styles of tombstones up there. There are a few very tall obelisks uh, that looked... um, There are a few that look like carved bricks just buried in the ground, Um, and and some faded limestone arched tablets. There are a lot of different styles of tombstones at Beach Grove, but almost all of them have one thing in common. They have the name of the person buried there. They have a birth date and a death date. 
I said almost because the only stones which do not have that information belong to someone who has not yet passed. They have a name and a birth date. And when I was a little older, I enlisted in the army and I was stationed in Germany. While I was there, I visited, visited, I, visited I went to some of the touristy sites, like the Peppy Pig impression. Um, I, I went to some of the touristy sites, and I saw a lot of old tombstones there as well. Now, when I said that Beech Grove was old by American standards, I mean we have tombstones in Beech Grove going back to the 1700s. But in Europe, this tomb held, or this trend held, and I saw tombstones going back a thousand years or more. You know what they had on them? The name of the person buried there, the birth date, and the death date. Solomon, the king of Israel, the son of David, wrote in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 2, It is the same for all, since the same event happens to the righteous and the wicked, to the good and the evil, to the clean and to the unclean, to him who sacrifices and to him who does not sacrifice, as the Good one is, so the sinner is. And as he who swears, and, and he who swears is as he who shuns the oath. This is an evil that is done under the sun, that the same event happens to all. Also, the hearts of the children of man are full of evil, and madness is in their hearts while they live, and after that, they go to the dead no matter who we are, no matter where we live, no matter how wealthy we become or how beloved or how despised we are, the same event happens to us all. It wasn't always this way, of course. In Genesis chapter 2, God created us to live forever. Our job was to work the garden. In one of my very favorite verses in the whole Bible, it gets funnier every time. Uh, We read in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them, and God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Humanity was put there to work the garden, but we were also to grow, to fill the earth, to subdue it, to have dominion over every living thing that moves on it, because we were made in the image of God. And these things were His gift to us. We read further in Genesis 2 and 16, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but... Of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. You will will die when, when when you eat of it? That means nobody was dying. We were made to live immortal. With bodies of pure, perfect, uncorrupted flesh, we all we had all we could ever want. We had purpose. We had protection, we were safe, we were provided for, we were loved, we had an intimate, direct, personal relationship with the creator of the universe. Now, the Bible doesn't say how long this lasted, but rabbinical tradition, which I think is kind of cynical, says that Adam and Eve wandered around the garden for six hours before they finally stumbled on the tree. And they just couldn't take it anymore, and they ate the forbidden fruit. That's rabbinical tradition, I understand. Um, I I like to think we might have made it a day before we decided to rebel, but... In 1 Timothy chapter 2 and 14, Paul is talking about something else, but he gives us a, a brief insight to the Adam and Eve story. He says, And Adam was not deceived, but but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Now, he's referring, of course, to the story in Genesis chapter 3 and beginning at verse 6. So when the woman saw the tree was good for food 
and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took some of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. And then, exactly as the Lord God said would happen in Genesis 2 and 17, we began to die. Abel was the first of us to die. He died by the hand of his brother, Cain. But, but soon, we realized that through the sin of Adam and Eve, death came to reign in our mortal bodies. The arc of life always ended in death. Everyone, everywhere, sooner or later, would breathe their last, and that would be the end. A show of hands who feels inspired this morning. We cannot blame the apostles for leaving. As we read in Luke 24, two of them cut out early Sunday morning, as soon as the Sabbath was over, making for Damascus. The others huddled together somewhere, planning their own escapes or just hiding from the authorities to work through their grief. The women had gone to the tomb, but just to anoint the body because, because well, because Jesus was dead. Jesus was as dead as Moses. Jesus was as dead as Father Abraham, as dead as righteous Abel himself, and dead was dead. You see, in, in 1789, in a private correspondence to his friend Jean-Baptiste Leroy, American founding father Benjamin Franklin wrote, Our new constitution is now established. Everything seems to promise it will be durable, but in this world, nothing is certain except death and taxes. That's the rule, you see. If there are rules to the game of life, that's the first one. Everybody dies. Death is the end. So, so that, that morning, when Mary and the other women went to the tomb... They didn't expect to see what they saw. They expected to see a, a troop of soldiers standing there on guard. Those soldiers were scattered. They, they, were, they were gone. I, I imagine those big heavy Roman shields and some helmets and a couple of swords just laying around the courtyard because the men had fled. They expected to see a heavy stone rolled in front of the mouth of the tomb. But the stone was rolled away. The women expected to look in and see the body of Jesus already beginning to decay. But it was gone. Mary helped put the body in the tomb. She knew where the tomb was. She went to the right tomb. She, 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 was, she, was, she was there to arrange the burial cloths along with John and the other Mary. She knows the rules. She knows that death is the end. And she could not understand what had happened. Now, as we read in our primary text in John chapter 20 and 2, she fled. She, she, so she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have laid him. She said this because dead is dead, and Jesus is dead. He couldn't move himself, so somebody had to take him. So Peter and John run back to the tomb with Mary fast on their heels. John arrives first, but he's... Well, John is afraid. It's, it's a tomb, right? And, and, and there's something unsettling about the tomb, because we all know that dead is dead, and that we're all in the process of dying. Peter, you see, though, Peter is racked by guilt. Peter has been suffering for the last two days and three nights. 
part of the third day. Peter has been suffering knowing what he did, remembering the last time he met eyes with Jesus, the moment the rooster crowed. Peter, Peter needs to know. Now, I love the, the garden tomb in, in Jerusalem and its, its tall door that you can step up and, and, and walk into, but that has been changed over time. Um, tombs in ancient Israel were, it would have been carved out on the inside, but there wouldn't have been a door that you could stand up and walk through because you only needed to use that door one time to bring the body in. It would have been a small hole near the base of the, uh, uh, near, near, near the, the base of where the door is now. That's why the, the Bible says Peter stooped over to look in, right? He didn't just walk in. He, he, he bent, he bent in. John, John is standing there trying to decide if he wants to go in. And I just imagine Peter doing a power slide into home base, diving through the hole because he needs to know. He needs to see for himself. And, and John, you know, not wanting to appear a coward, follows closely behind and they find, well, they, they find it empty. I mean, they find it empty, exactly as Mary had said, the body was gone, but, but they also find the grave clothes, the linen shroud lying there, the face cloth, uh, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the shroud, but neatly folded up by itself. John had himself arranged these or helped to arrange these cloths around Jesus. He, he would have wrapped the linen shroud around him and tucked it under. If somebody's going to steal the body, they're not going to, they're going to leave the grave cloth. And they're certainly not going to take the time to fold the face towel. It doesn't make any sense at all. So John tells us in verse 9 of, of chapter 20, and as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. They didn't know. They didn't get it. They only knew that the body had been there and now it wasn't. So they, they puzzled. They wondered. They thought about these things. But then they went home because, you see, dead is dead. And death is the end. Mary didn't go in. She had already looked in. She had already seen that the tomb was empty. She, she didn't need to go back in. But, but now she stooped to look. The, the men have, have gone in and, and come out, and Mary stoops to look. John 20 and 11, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet, and they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. Now, having said this, she turned around, and she saw Jesus standing there, but, but she didn't know that it was Jesus or her eyes were filled with tears or, or, or her hands or, or she just knew that dead is dead. And that's not Jesus because Jesus is dead. And Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. You see, at that moment, the moment Jesus spoke her name, the rules were done away with. I'm sure she didn't understand it. I'm sure Mary did not have a clearly developed Christology and an advanced understanding of resurrection sanctification, but it did not matter. It 
did not matter because Jesus is standing there. He's standing there calling her name. And that's what matters. That's all that matters. Now, the very polite King James Version in verse 17 reads, Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my father and to your father, to my God and to your God. In the very polite King James we misunderstand. That's a problem with a 400-year-old translation. I don't mean to, to, to speak negatively of the King James, but English evolves over time, and even 400 years is enough for some words to change here. The Greek word that Jesus uses is hopto, which implies not a touch, but a close clutching action, as in Cling. This is why the ESV translates it as cling. Do not cling to me because, dearly beloved, at that moment, and I'm sure you agree, no force on earth could have stopped Mary from casting herself onto him, from throwing her arms around his neck, from burying her face in his hair, and from weeping openly. You see, death entered the world through Adam. And from Adam to Jesus, death reigned supreme. Nobody ever beat it. It was the one event that happened to them all until Jesus. Jesus reverses the curse of Adam. Jesus reverses the sin of Cain. Jesus endures the wrath of the flood of Noah and the slavery in Egypt and all the wickedness and malice in Christ. And in Christ alone, sin is conquered and death is forever defeated. Paul speaks much of this in 1 Corinthians 15. And there we read in verse 20, but in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has also come resurrection from the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each to his own order, Christ, the first fruits, and then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and every power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet and the last enemy to be destroyed. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Dearly beloved, Jesus Christ drank down death like water in order to pay a debt he did not owe because you owe a debt you cannot pay. In him, and in him alone, death is defeated forever. And today you are here because he has called you to this place. Today, you are listening to this message because Jesus loves you so very much that he wants a personal relationship with you. He wants you to come to him. All of this, all of this, the cross and the, the beating and the sleepless nights and the pain and the misery and the teaching and, and running from the Pharisees and, and standing in the synagogue and and. and and, and being yelled at and being hated and reviled, the God of the universe did these things because he loves you. You. Jesus Christ endured the cross to show you the depths of his love. He rose from the grave to show you the height of his glory. He didn't need to do any of it. He's God. He doesn't need anything. He doesn't lack anything. But he loves you with a love strong enough to break the rule of death itself. Dearly beloved, Jesus Christ is risen. 
He is risen indeed. Amen. Let's bow our hearts. Blessed Lord, in the cross, in the cross, we see our salvation. And in the empty tomb, we find assurance of eternal life. Because you live, we will live also. We praise and worship you for your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's turn to our uh, exceedingly appropriate closing hymn, number 364, Because He Lives, we'll sing all verses.
Death was the rule. All the prophets died. Zechariah was stoned on the temple mount on the Sabbath by those who professed to worship the God he told them about. Isaiah was stuffed into a hollow log and sawn in half. I can keep going. Jesus Christ came to defeat death in him and in you. Well, I, I, I love to ask Protestants especially, Catholics don't have a problem with this, but I love to ask Protestants especially, when does eternal life begin? You see, Hebrews chapter 11 goes through the hall of faith from righteous Abel to Father Abraham to Joshua and Moses and Samson and all the great saints of the Old Testament. And then Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. What is this great cloud of witnesses? All the names we've just read about in Hebrews 11. Dearly beloved, we like to think of Moses as dead, but I promise you he is more alive than you are. Because Jesus Christ has defeated death now and forever. Because he lives, you will live also. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Thank you.